que Dios tiene un plan más grande y más hermoso para nosotros. Sí, pronto el cielo nos recompensará al doble por nuestro esfuerzo y nuestra fe. Y que ese buen día, ese gran día con el que tanto hemos soñado, llegará. México recibirá el jueves a Canadá y el domingo a Honduras para visitar el miércoles 13 a El Salvador en la eliminatoria para el Mundial de Qatar, en la cual va de líder con dos victorias, un empate y siete puntos, seguido por su rival de turno, Estados Unidos y Panamá, con cinco unidades, Costa Rica, Honduras y El Salvador, con dos y Jamaica, con uno. A continuación, la prensa de Canadá calienta la previa del partido. That form also scoring his first goal since since that yeah. skull fracture it, or in a competitive match, his first goal um, the weekend before against Southampton, a really really well taken goal, uh, a golazo as they they would say in Spanish. So golazo. I think it's encouraging to see him him return with goals and assists. Um, however they come, but also the way he's done it, they've been, you know, really impressive, picking the ball up in deep positions, carrying the ball forward, beating players, taking players on, showing that, that he's really confident in, in himself right now. So I think that's really encouraging from a Mexico perspective, because he's a player that you expect to, to carry the attacking load. Yeah, absolutely. And when I went live, uh, when the roster dropped and a lot of questions were getting thrown at me about Mexico and about Raul Jimenez. And, and I said, I'm like, I don't know, we, I don't think anyone really knows exactly what type of Raul Jimenez you're going to get back now because that, the injury he went through was, was very severe and it was very scary. But I mean, it looks like he's making the right steps and it looks like he's producing already, which it's a sign. I mean, you don't want to ever see a player have to go down like that. So it, it's a sign from a neutral perspective, obviously from a Canadian that I hope he gets back, but it is a little worrying considering that we're taking them on in the next match. So I guess uh, before we get into breaking down the, the match itself, let's, uh, I asked you and gave you a little task before coming on here to rip through your predicted formation, your predicted, predicted starting 11. I'll do the same and then we can kind of tactically break it down and see what uh, what this uh, could potentially lead to. So I'll, I'll start with yourself. So how do you see the Mexican side lining up for this game? Okay, so I see them using a 4-3-3. Like I said before, that's that's Martino's favorite system and he really changes from the 4-3-3. Um, Ochoa, I think, is going to be in goal. That's that's for sure. Anytime he's he's fit and available, he'll be the starter for Martino moving forward. Then um, at, at uh, left and right back, I think certainly at left back, Gallardo is going to be the starter there. He's the man with the most minutes, most matches um, during the Mar Martino regime. At right back, I think you could have Chaka Rodriguez. Um, Chaka Rodriguez there. You could also have Jorge Sanchez. Jorge Sanchez was the player who started two of the three matches back in September. Um, Chaka Rodriguez was injured. I think he comes back into the team now. He's also a player you have to keep in mind. I don't think either of those options are necessarily convincing, certainly from a defensive standpoint. Both attack better than they defend, which is a big worry because Canada's big strength is down that side, attacking with Alfonso Davies. And you could even, you know, you have Buchanan on the other side. I think that's a real worry for Mexico, but I think Chaka actually did pretty well against Davies in the Club World Cup final yep. uh, back in, in February. So. At least there's that that previous experience, knowing that he did pretty well in that match um, from a defensive standpoint. So I think he gets to not. He's also he's got the third most minutes on, in the Martino regime. He's a player who's played a lot of matches under under Martino. So I think he'll he'll get the nod having that that experience. And then at center back, it's a little bit unknown because you're getting Vasquez back, you're getting Moreno back. So Montes and Araujo, Cesar Montes and, and Nestor Araujo were the the partnership in September, and I think. They acquitted themselves well. I don't think Mexico were extremely tested defensively over the course of of the three matches. I think Panama in the first half, I think, is when they were put under the under most pressure. But I think they acquitted themselves pretty well on the whole. I think Montes in particular was very good. I'd expect him to keep his starting spot, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with the left center back spot because Araujo is not a natural. He's a he's a right footed player. Yeah. He's not a natural left sided center back. And you have two left-footed players in Moreno and Vasquez coming back now. Vasquez and Moreno were the, or excuse me, and Montes were the partnership in the Olympics, and and looked very. That was a very solid partnership for Mexico at the Olympics. Obviously, it's a step up in level to then be playing World Cup qualifiers, but that's a partnership that you you've already seen. I think that could be recuperated, but the question is whether or not Vasquez is going to be thrown in at the deep end, so to speak, because he hasn't played a single minute with Genoa. So he's a player who who's not in, he doesn't have the match fitness perhaps. So I'd actually expect to keep that Montez Araujo partnership for this match. I would, I would expect Martino to stick with that. 
we'll have to see what happens. Also, Moreno's recently returned from an injury. He's only been back now for about three weeks. Um, yeah. He injured himself in the Gold Cup final, his his hamstring. So I'd expect that partnership to to maintain itself. But I think moving forward, if Vasquez, for example, starts getting minutes at Genoa, you could you can see him uh, take that left side and center back spot. Then in midfield, Edson Alvarez is is the number six for sure. He he was great in the last qualifiers. He's He's been going from strength to strength with Ajax, a player who, who gives you a lot defensively, but also going forward, he scored a couple goals already this season for Ajax. He's a player who's really improved on the ball since he moved to Europe. Um, then I think Hector Herrera has, has got to be in there now. He's going he's gonna to move into midfield now and, and play there. A player who um, is really important for Mexico over the summer was, was probably their best player, as I said before. Um, really stepping up in an attacking sense as well over the summer gets a couple of goals a couple of assists in the in the gold cup semifinal he's the he's the one who scores the winning goal against you guys at the death in the 99th minute so a player who who's important for mexico he, he's the real metronome in midfield for mexico yeah. he's usually the one with the most touches the most passes and is also starting to make a difference more and more in attack so a player who's really accepting that responsibility then that third midfield spot i i've put down luis romo i think that's perhaps that's the spot where there could be some chopping and changing from Tata, certainly over the course of the three matches. I'm giving it to Roma because I think he's a player who who's multifunctional. He can he can give you a lot defensively. He came up as a center back um, when he debuted in the Mexican League. He would, he was a center back for Carretera, but he's a player who gets forward really well, making runs from deep, scoring goals. He's got a goal and an assist now in his last two matches in Liga MX. So he's He's rounding into form now after after the Olympics. I think there was a, a little uh, tiredness there also participating in the September qualifiers, but he's he's getting back to his best form. I think he gives you a lot at both ends of the pitch. So I'd expect to see him there, but there are a lot of other options that Martino has in that third midfield spot. You've got Andres Guardado, Jonathan Dos Santos, um, Charlie Rodriguez. So it, it wouldn't surprise me certainly over the course of three matches if if some of those players, one of the, if one of those players was given a start, we'll have to see. And then up front, I think it it picks itself. I think you've got Tecatito on the right, Raul Jimenez now in the middle, and, and Chucky Lozano on the left. That that trident that was serving Mexico really well back in the fall of 2020. And those they played um, in the fall of 2020. They played some pretty high profile friendlies and and had a lot of success with that trident. We're getting some good results. And then obviously Raul Jimenez. Um, his skull fracture kind of put paid to that, seeing how that tried and developed. But I think now Mexico fans are going to get another chance to see that um, consistently over these three matches. And two small small questions because that was that was basically the lineup I was I was thinking about as well. But it, it's just it's interesting from when you look at, at as a national team because you know that you kind of want your players to play consistently. It, it kind of is what it is. But I mean, I want to focus a little bit on Hector, Hector Herrera because obviously he's one of the most influential players you're going to have in that midfield but as you obviously are aware uh he doesn't get a ton of minutes for atletico and i honestly don't see him getting a ton of minutes for the season i just was wondering from your perspective is that any concern for you seeing that hector herrera who's supposed to be so influential to this midfield is a player who just unfortunately for him just can't seem to lock down a spot out of atletico i think you'd definitely like to see him getting more minutes than than what he's been getting um, but since he's been back he's he started once he's he's come off the bench for significant minutes um, in three other matches so it, not a ton of minutes he's definitely not a surefire starter in that team or or one of Simeone's kind of preferred players in that midfield position but I think he's still going to get his minutes over the course of the season um, again not as not as many as a Mexico fan would like or certainly Martina would like yeah. but I think you you saw last season he wasn't getting a lot of minutes either but I think his his performances with the national team were still at a pretty good level yeah. um, so I think he's he's a player who will still make a difference and, and still add something, whether or not whether he's playing not as much as you'd like to see him play or whether he, he's playing a lot. You have to keep in mind that Atletico are in are in multiple competitions during Champions League. Also, at some point, the Copa del Rey will restart um, in the winter. So, and then you've got La Liga as well. So there are a lot of matches coming for them. They've got a very deep squad, but I think he'll he'll get his chances. But he's he's a player who can still make a difference, even though he's not playing or certainly not starting every single game for Atletico. Yep, yep, and those are yeah, those are great points. And, and some players it, it just seems like sometimes with the more experience you have, you, you can get you get by that, but it's, it's always a fun debate. Dios tiene un plan más grande y más hermoso para nosotros. Sí, pronto el cielo nos recompensará el doble por nuestro esfuerzo y nuestra fe. Y
que es su buen día, ese gran día con el que tanto hemos soñado, llegará.